Orthodox faith as to something holy, longing it with all their hearts and prizing it above all, Orthodox people ought to endeavor to spread it among people of other creeds. Christ the Savior has said that neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. The light of orthodoxy was not lit to shine only on a small number of men. The Orthodox Church is universal. It remembers the words of its founder, Go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We ought to share our spiritual wealth, our truth, light, and joy with others who are deprived of these blessings, but often are seeking them and thirsting for them. But who is to work for the spread of the Orthodox faith, for the increase of the children of the Orthodox Church? Pastors and missionaries, you say? You are right, but are they to be alone? St. Paul wisely compares the Church of Christ to a body, and the life of a body is shared by all its members. So it ought to be in the life of the Church also. The spread of Christ's faith ought to be near and precious to the heart of every Christian. In this work, every member of the Church ought to take a lively and heartfelt interest. St. Tikhon Enlightener of North America. These words of our Holy Father Tikhon, that were once uttered over 100 years ago in this country, are still the very challenge in which Orthodox Christians in this land strive to bear witness to. The joyous message of the resurrection and for the life of the world. It is with that same missionary zeal that Bishop Paul of Chicago and the Midwest set forth the direction of his diocese. We need to realize that we still live in a fallen world in need of Christ and the good news. We live in a world where people claim that they see but they are blind. Jesus tells us, but if your eye is not sound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? We are a culture in denial. A good foundation is necessary because if we begin with issues and not with Christ, we come across as a church with rules and regulations. Morality and sanctity of life become legislated issues and instead of the gospel, a moral code is preached. Issues of social justice, social welfare become secularized, ends in themselves when separated from the gospel. All the above become ends in themselves, offering nothing transcendent. It is through the prayers and labors of those who have come before us in this diocese, such as St. Tikhon, St. John of Chicago, St. Alexis of Minneapolis, and many other holy hierarchs, clergy and faithful, that we struggle to preach the good news in this day and age for the life of the world. When Bishop Paul gave his, um, wrote the letter concerning his vision for the Diocese of the Midwest, I was so moved because I thought of evangelism and how we might out, reach out to other people who have maybe not been exposed to the church. There has been a rediscovery of the meaning of baptism, its entrance and integration into the church, of ecclesiological significance. But ecclesiology, unless it is given its true cosmic perspective to the life of the world, unless it is understood as the Christian form, is always the church considered as a being in itself and not the new relation of God, man, and the world. The church, if it is to be the church, must be the revelation of that divine love which God poured out into our hearts. Without this love, nothing is valid in the church 
because nothing is possible. The content of Christ's Eucharist is love, and only through love can we enter into it and be made its partakers. So Father Alexander uh, mentions that uh, without the love of God, there's nothing valid. Uh, and uh, uh, this was uh, uh, very tangible for me pastorally uh, as we were receiving a couple into the church uh, and the first time that they were there for Pascha, afterwards I went up to them and said, how, did, how, did, how was your experience? How did you feel about this? Uh, and both of them, very teary-eyed, looked at me and said, uh, we've never celebrated the resurrection. This is the love of God for us, that, that he, uh, he, he died for us and, and he, came, he was resurrected, He brought us all back to life, uh, and, and in this way our parish was able to witness to them that this is for the life of the world, that uh, Christ rose from the dead, brought us to life, uh, and, and now somebody has experienced that in a very tangible way in our local parish. joy of us in priesthood and the joy of the church gathering is at the Divine Liturgy. And it's there that if we're paying attention to everything that we pray and everything that we offer, that there is life there. There's actually joy and life and, and, and actual celebration of the, of, uh, of the Pascha. I lost my oldest son to drug addiction a little over two years ago. The most joyous liturgy I ever celebrated was three days after his death. And it was the most spirit-filled liturgy that I ever celebrated in 32 years of priesthood. Uh, it was like Pascha times 10. It was absolutely phenomenal. And there's where I realized that in all my sinfulness, that here in this liturgy, no matter what sins we carry, if we know that we are trying and we believe that we need to try and struggle and overcome these, that Christ makes us worthy to be here at this liturgy today. And on that day it was just unbelievably present and, 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 and realized. How can we help fearing for our small flock? How easily the candle can be extinguished by the wind coming through the open window? How easily can our oarsmen in a frail boat be overturned by the sea waves? Here we cannot boast of great numbers, neither of renown, nor of wealth, nor of learning, all that is valued in this world. We are strong here only in one thing, and possessing the true Orthodox faith, and that is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, and we should ask the Lord for the increase of this gift. Let them stand fast in thy holy church in the Orthodox faith.